Hey everyone, how's it going? Gabby here. So in this video, we're going to be talking about electron donating and electron withdrawing groups. While this isn't an explicit topic, like on the syllabus, it goes hand in hand with the week one topics, which is why I always like to introduce it first. So let's go ahead and let's just talk about these kinds of groups. So donating and withdrawing groups, they deal a lot with resonance and things of that nature. So if you are comfortable with that kind of um, terminology and things of that sort, you know, this topic shouldn't be too crazy. All right, so when we talk about donating groups, another term that we like to use is activators, okay? So what donating groups do is that they make positive charges more stable. A lot of the time, you're gonna see these groups be represented as atoms with lone pairs. So an oxygen with lone pairs, nitrogen, sulfur, those are common examples of electron donating groups, okay? Other example of electron donating groups are methyls, ethyls, propyls, things of that nature, okay? Now, methyls, ethyls, propyls, carbon chains, they don't have lone pairs. So how exactly do they donate, right? That's the question. How do they give someone electrons? Well, you guys are familiar with carbocations, right? We know that a tertiary carbocation is more stable than a secondary carbocation. The reason for this, the actual like chemical reason is that methyl groups or carbon chains in general, they are able to donate electron density towards that positive center through something called hyperconjugation, okay? So it's through hyperconjugation that carbon chains, alkyl groups, these things can stabilize positive charges, okay? They're not as great as oxygen with lone pairs, but they're definitely better than say a carbonyl is at stabilizing a positive charge, okay? All right, so in addition to donating groups, we also have electron withdrawing groups. Those are the exact opposite. So electron withdrawing groups, also known as deactivators, these are going to make negative charges more stable, okay? Common examples of electron withdrawing groups include carbonyls, nitriles, NO2, and CF3. So when we're saying they're more common, it's not necessarily that they're the only ones that exist, they're just the ones that you're probably gonna see the most amount of in this course, okay? So when it comes to a carbonyl, it can absorb those electrons and make itself negative, okay? So a lot of this goes back to resonance. So here, I just have a nice list for you. So if you'll notice, these are listed by activating and deactivating groups. You're gonna to get to that terminology in about two weeks. So it's still gonna be on the first exam. Um, but all I need you to think of right now is that activating refers to donating groups. Deactivating refers to withdrawing groups, okay? So the cool part here is it actually tells you the strengths. What's so great about that? Well, the awesome part is that you know, an OCH3 is better at stabilizing a positive charge than a methyl, right? An NH2 is a better stabilizer than an OCH3, okay? And this also goes in order of stabiliz stabilizing. So what I mean by that as is, is this, um, how do I want to write this? As you go from bottom to top, you increase in the stability of a positive charge right? So when you're comparing NH2 to NO2, NH2 is going to make that positive charge much more stable than NO2 will, okay? And then when we're talking about negative charges, the trend goes this way. 